I did quite a few videos a while back on the subject of guilt and how I believe that it permeates a lot of our thinking. And one of the interesting things about guilt is that it uh, it works in many different on many different levels. Um, and of course, the biggest one that we're most familiar with is the idea of blame. Whose fault is this? Okay, well, <clears throat> guilt can sneak into your thinking um, in ways that you don't quite realize, and you don't might might not actually identify as guilt. Uh, for example, we're talking about depressive realism. Again, this is another video aimed at Andreas and his uh, request that I explore this subject of depressive realism. Um, what kind of guilt is inherent in a depressive, realistic sort of point of view? For example, um, what's implied? Well, I'm depressed. Depression is presumably an undesirable state. That's a I think if we don't agree on that fundamentally, we're going to have to back up even more. Uh, I've heard some people sort of say that depression might not be an undesirable state. All right. Well, I'm acting here, I'm talking here under the assumption that <laughs> people assume that being depressed is something they don't want to be. Um, and if you do want to be depressed, well, there you are. Or if you're one of those people that says it, I, it's irrelevant whether or not I'm depressed, yeah, I tend to sort of see that the same way. That's just my opinion. But anyway, <clears throat> I'm assuming here that the idea of this is I'm depressed, I don't want to be depressed about the world. Okay. Now, if I'm not depressed about the world, what do I do about that? Well, I can understand the depression. I can try to overcome it. Um, and in the case of a depressive realistic or depressive realism, I guess, point of view, uh, the conclusion seems to be that it makes sense to be depressed. In other words, um, an honest summing up of reality leads to depression. Which, if you ask me, is a point of view that is loaded with guilt. Um, it's not my fault that I'm depressed, it's the universe's fault. Um, where is the incumbency here? What efforts should be made? Well, there's no point in me attempting to fix my own depression if the universe is inherently depressing. Okay, in, in a sense, I'm off the hook. I don't have to do anything. It's that out there. It's uh, That's what's causing my depression. Everything else but me. Um, <clears throat> but of course the corollary to that is this is my fault that I'm depressed. If it's not the universe, then it's my fault. There's guilt to be <laughs> to be accepted by myself for my own depression. In other words, I'm miserable and it's my own fault. That's the um, bizarre paradox of guilt. If you say that everything is ultimately somebody's fault, or even if you sort of get this uh, subconscious idea that you know there is some kind of weird blame out there to be had, um, it can seriously mess up uh, your entire view of reality, of yourself, of everything. Uh, guilt is quite literally that poisonous, and if you can't work that out in your own head, I think that you're kind of stuck. And one of the horrible realizations that I think one inevitably makes in this life is sometimes people are destroyed by life. I guess it's a statistical probability there are people out there that are going to have what we might call massively unsuccessful lives. Uh, to the point where, you know, we can say, yes, it probably was better if that person had never been born. Is that anyone's fault? <laughs> well, we're back at guilt, aren't we? Is it the universe's fault? Well, we're back at guilt again. Um, or is it just something that's happening? There is no rhyme or reason. 
See, the interesting thing about when you start talking about this sort of thing, the depressive realistic, uh, or the, the depressive realism subject, um, <clears throat> you, the, the point of view that tends to be examined is the idea that the world is fundamentally a uh, depressing place, or that the universe is fundamentally uh, depressing, or that a depressed view of the world is more accurate than a non-depressed one. But it tends to lump all non-depressed people together in some absurd, gigantic lump that <laughs> people think you can just sort of talk about as a coherent group. Um, the Roma are a pretty small minority on this planet. Um, the gypsies. They have a term, gajo, I guess. I don't know if it's used among them or whatever, but you know, at some point, they referred to the entirety of the human race who wasn't a Roma as gajos. Now, that's kind of weird when you're sort of saying, okay, a guy who speaks only Quechua in, uh, in Peru or Bolivia or Aymara in, in South America is pretty much the same thing as somebody who only speaks Finnish or somebody who has grown up uh, in, um, oh, I don't know, Bengal in India. These are all the same. They're all just gajos. Uh, same thing as the old uh, Christian and heathen. Anybody who isn't a Christian is by definition a heathen, and they're all the same. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, or, you know, Jews and Gentiles, all that kind of thing. Us and them, this group, that group. We're the pure ones, they're the guilty ones. <clears throat> Um, the depressive realism argument tends to go along that line as well. Um, we're the ones who are seeing things realistically. You people are just prolonging this horrible existence. You, the other 99.99999% of the human race, are the bad people. You're the, you're the Gentiles. We're the chosen people or whatever. I don't know. We're the ones that at least are seeing things clearly. All you people are deluded. And you're causing all this, ultimately, by your stupid delusions. Guilt. It tends to permeate just about everything in our thinking. Um, but again, when you step outside of our society, out of our civilization, out of Western civilization, which strikes me that the farther west you go, the more guilt there is in our civilization. Um, when you step outside of that and you see civilizations that are built not upon guilt, you understand that it's not necessarily um, the only way to see the world. It's not the only way uh, to see the universe, life, your personal state of mind, or whatever. It's not the, the, It's not a question of somebody's fault. Uh, if you've ever lived among people in a society or a civilization that is completely free of guilt, or at least compared to your own society, is almost, you know, you don't see any guilt at all or sense of responsibility, accountability. If you don't see that kind of Sorry, I couldn't resist. If you don't see that kind of thing, it <clears throat> it can either be a horrifying sight for you because oh my God, these people they have no shame, they have they have no sense of remorse or guilt or anything like that. Oh, how horrible! Uh, in guilt-based societies, of course, that's the worst thing that you can feel that you can say about somebody is that person has no conscience, they have no sense of remorse, no whatever moral compass, or it's just all different words and terms for guilt. But it is possible to live that way, and I would say perhaps the majority of human history and most human societies have not employed guilt, um, have not sort of placed value on the universe. The universe simply is. Um, I have gotten, not so much anymore, but in, in my early time here on the prairies, I got close to the Aboriginal uh, people who live here, the Native Canadians. Um, their culture doesn't really emphasize guilt at all. In fact, I would say it's probably absent. Um, what their culture emphasizes is honor, is the, what we might call the Oriental or Eastern idea of face, of never, stepping, never backing down if there's, a, if there's a challenge to you, um, keeping a good appearance, keeping everybody else's respect, uh, that sort of thing is important, but what's going on in here is your own business. It's uh, it's unknowable, and nobody really gives it much thought of how the other guy is thinking. In fact, and they don't really analyze what the other person's actions are. It really doesn't matter. It, it's morally neutral. Whatever the guy does, <clears throat> they never really evolved that kind of internal 
uh, mouse trap that uh, you know you can step on that causes you pain whenever you step across a certain line in terms of your actions or your internal dialogue, as it were. Uh, so it. So these people, you would think, when you come here and you, you see the way that uh, the, the Native Canadians have been, pardon me, fucked. <laughs> like, I mean totally fucked by, uh, by history, I guess. Uh, you would think that they would have a lot of blame for everybody else, but they don't. <laughs> they do not. It's, they don't place value on the fact that this has happened. I shouldn't say they, because even they, I've just chastised the Roma for plastering everybody into the same group here. I shouldn't say the same thing about Native people, but the Native people whose culture I've come to understand a little tiny bit don't see it that way. One of the things that people under people are flabbergasted by is, why aren't you Native people mad about this? Because they don't see things in terms of justice or injustice, blame or anything like that. It's just the world has worked itself out in a certain way. Um... And it just is. It's not... There, there's no rhyme or reason to it. If anyone has a reason to be depressed and, and rebellious and angry and, you know, feeling resentful against the cosmos, it's them. But they don't. Um, <clears throat> again, I, this is a gross generalization, which is something that I spoke out against earlier on in the video, but I'm just trying to give an example of, uh, of a culture that is not guilt-based and doesn't rely upon denunciation or guilt or moral indignation or an inner moral uh, landmine or minefield to keep your own sort of actions in order to restrain yourself or to watch your step. They don't rely on any of that. Again, it's honor. This comes out in very small ways. Um, don't ever put yourself in a situation where you and a young Aboriginal male, uh, one of you is going to have to back down. That's going to be trouble. Um, well, I shouldn't say it's going to be trouble, but there's a good chance, or at least that is a risk, uh, there is going to be trouble because, again, I guess perhaps it's a throwback to a warrior society, which is essentially what they all were, or it's just that's what the important parts, that's what the important restraint is on their society, is show, face, that kind of thing. Latin America, in many ways, is like that. Um, it's, uh, it's a question of honor, it's a question of of uh, prestige, I guess. It's a question of your own position in, in the hierarchy of society, and if it's challenged, you must fight to maintain that position. But it's not guilt. Uh, you fighting it out with another guy for dominance is not a morally significant thing. It's just something that happens. So, how do you view the universe? Is the universe the way it is because of something? Because of some sort of moral judgment? Can you pass moral or value judgments on the cosmos? Or is it just, it's just the way it is, and that's that? I would say that the DR point of view is heavily saturated with guilt. Uh, because again, you're sort of saying the world is a bad place. The world, it's the world's fault that I am depressed. It's the cosmos's fault that I am depressed. Um, why am I depressed? Well, I don't want to be depressed. Why am I depressed? Because I live in this horrible place. It's not my fault. It's, well, even, or, or I suppose you could sort of say it is my fault, which is, again, the other side of guilt. It's my fault. I've brought this on myself. Because fe feeling depressed is, of course, you know, in, this, in the guilt kind of view of things, it's my fault. It's got to be somebody's fault. It's either the universe's fault or it's my fault. It's not just something that I've thought myself into and I can think myself back out of again. It's somebody's fault. Somebody's got to be punished for my for my um, my less than desirable position, or someone at least has to uh, wear this. It's got to be somebody's fault. So, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a tricky thing, and I think that, that depressive realism has, um, even though they may not realize it, but it's advocates, and, and I've read quite a few of them at uh, Andreas's uh, request, um, I would say that there is an enormous amount of guilt in there. Um, and in, in the case of the DR, I guess it's directed against the cosmos. Um, and the people that you get just that you get juxtaposed with as a depressive realist 
are everybody else. And it's assumed that everybody else has a bubbly and optimistic view of the world. Um, I don't buy that dichotomy. Uh, again, it's there's more in this world than Roma and Gajos, <laughs> uh, regardless of how convenient it is for a Roma or perhaps a Gajo to see it that way. Um, I am me. I'm not. I'm not some mass. I'm not a member of this mass of humanity called the non-DRs out there. Uh, that, can, that can cohere into a group that you can analyze and sort of look at that way. It doesn't work like that. Um, so again, even even splitting the, the, the human race into those two parts is guilt. Uh, it's There are those of us who are realistic and those of us who are not realistic. They, over there, those non-DRs. It's, uh, again, guilt creeps into things in ways that I think that people don't realize. Um, and I, part, uh, well, a huge part of my conquering of my own depression, or at least bringing it under control, was not thinking that way, or trying hard not to think that way. And it still happens, of course, all the time, because my the civilization I live in stinks of guilt. Yeah, it's all their fault because they're guilting me all the time. But no, no, I'm just sort of saying that that's the way I think as compared to other cultures our society is. Um, this has turned into a real ramble. I wonder how long it is. But the essential thing, the essential point I'm trying to make is that um, if you take guilt out of depressive realism, it tends to fall down because, again, the assumption is that there's something, someone to blame for a non-desirable state that I am in as a depressive realist. Um, there is, uh, people say, no, no, it's just a cause, it's not a guilt. Well, it's just the same thing, because again, your, your depression is a value judgment on the cosmos, especially if it's, you call it depressive realism. You are evaluating it, you are putting value on the universe, and you are explaining your reasons for putting that value on the universe. It's the universe's fault. A real ramble, but I enjoyed it.